I want to thank you for your prayers, and I mean there has really been a rally. People have really got a hold of God. Yes. And I think probably something that touches me as much or more than anything else is when I hear from people who are hurting themselves. And yet they stood by me and prayed for me, and I appreciate it. And God honors that. I was talking to someone just, well, Tim, he don't want to mention his name, and he described it perfectly. He says, it's just when you're fighting the devil, it's just like a roller coaster ride, and it has been that. So Spotting has got hurt, and she was on the critical list for so long, and then she got off, and things looked really good, and then started to deteriorate, and then things looked really good, and I'd be given a report, and then things would begin to deteriorate. And finally, they was going to let her go home, I believe the day before yesterday. Uh, Brent was there an awful lot, and so uh, he is aware of this. They're going to discharge her. In fact, I thought that I was going to show you. They gave me the discharge papers, and I signed them, and they were sending her home, and it said that uh, she should come back in two weeks, and it was at a time when I seen her change, and, uh, and Brent and some of the others was there. I mean, she had a tremendous headache, and before she could answer questions, and now not so much, and I asked her what month that it was, and she could always tell me September, and she told me that it was July. And, and things was really bad, and when she talked, you had to get your ear down to listen to what she was saying. And uh, as she got up to use the bathroom, and they helped her, she couldn't even sit there, she fell over, on the floor and laid there until they came and got her and they sent them their home. And I said, Lord, this is probably the worst that I've seen her. I couldn't communicate before and, and, and now I can't communicate and she can't walk and they've said they've done all that they could do and they're sending her home. And after they gave me the discharge, papers, another doctor came. And Clint is aware of this. We found out that his name was Valentine. <laughs> Not only is his name Valentine, but he's a skeet shooter. And, and so we started talking about that. And, and I said, she's got such a tremendous, tremendous headache. Well, he gave the report. Someone says, well, we're going to do one more CAT scan before we send her. And they did a CAT scan and they said, we have to send her into surgery immediately. So the pressure is built up in her head and, and it is pushing her brain off to one side. And they showed me the CAT scan and when she first came in, they marked the center of it. And there was a spot there, Clint looked at it and it had moved dramatically over to one side and there was a lot of pressure. And so they said, we're going to have to do surgery. It's difficult. And then I don't know if Clint was there. Probably was. Was you there when they said that what too bad 20% of the time? So Clint up and said, now 20% of the time this procedure that we do results in seizure, stroke, or even death. And because I have to tell you that. And, and so I signed the paper and uh, we prayed and they did the surgery. Sister Kimsey was there and several other people. It was about a five hour of surgery, something like that. And, and they brought her back and they didn't want to put a breathing tube in her, but they had to. And so I was with her that night. And then when uh, she started to come around, she fought that tube a little bit. and, and uh, Navy, I believe it was. There's so many people came and helped, had to hold her hands down. And, and so through the night last night, uh, as I sat there, there wasn't much, wasn't much reaction. Last morning. Last morning. This morning, about 
8 o'clock, well, at 5 o'clock this morning, they went down another CAT scan and they said that it, it really it, it couldn't have went any better. And we're waiting to see if there would be a change. And so about 8 o'clock, she finally woke up and, and, uh, and I'm sitting in a chair and she looked over at me and she saw me and she went like that and she wanted me to hold her hand and I held her hand. And I talked to her and I promise you, if I was not aware that she had an accident, I would never know it. Praise but God. She knew everything. Her Hallelujah. speech was loud. Her Thank speech you, was Jesus. fast. And in fact, I'm talking to Dr. Valentine about uh, shooting skeet, and I says, and my wife shoots some, and, and uh, he says, what kind of a gun does she shoot? And, and she says, a vanilla, and he says, oh, is it a whatever? And I don't know what the brand, she says, no, it's not. A, so now they're talking, she says, but I like sporting plays better than I do, and so the conversation is going on. I mean, she is totally, totally alert. And I says, honey, do you know what I'm going to do this afternoon, this evening? She says, yeah, you're going to go preach. And, <laughs> and, and I mean, I left there absolutely just shouting. Had one problem, and the doctor says, we will check out the skills and see if she has the motor skills, if she's going to be able to walk. And so I left there, and I'm, I'm really weary, and I thought, I just trust in God that she's going to have movement in her legs that she'll Amen. be able to walk. And I came in and, and uh, man, this is hard. And Nadine said, I just left the hospital and, and uh, said your wife was walking. Woo! So, Great. Uh, we, you expect me to preach a little bit, but what I really want to do is go outside and do about five weeks around this <laughs> Praise God. And so, I would you do something with me before I preach? For me, Jesus. would you just stand? You can pray. And let's just thank the Lord. Yes. I'm a Hallelujah. Happy would you just lift your hands Praise and thank the Lord? Holy Lord. Jesus, you're so good Jesus. to us, Master. We love you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Just a little bit ago, uh, I'd gone to have my foot x-rayed, which was next door to the, almost, to the hospital. And so when we were leaving, Kathy had taken me over there. Uh, Sister Claudine said, keep on praise until the shackles fall. That's her favorite song. But I want to sing a song, but that's not what I want to sing. Do y'all mind if I sing a song? Oh, sing it. Oh, Brother Ray, you just shout and have a good time. Would Amen. You do that? Amen. You know, this song is the first song that I ever sung that really became a part of my testimony and who I am. Because the second verse tells it all. Because I searched for God till I was 20 years old before I got satisfied that I knew Him. And that's when he baptized me in the Holy Ghost. And after that, I had no doubts whatsoever Amen. that I was a born-again believer. Amen. And that's been, you know how many years that's been? 60 years. 60 years. Some of y'all have been doing it longer than me, but that's a long time. Go ahead, Brother John. I gotta keep on singing. Oh. Yes. Like a baby when he cries for his mother. Like a child, I was helpless, alone. Then I met the master. 
Now I am one of his home. Can you testify to that? For all. Sure that he will. Yes. I uh, know that 
The last thing that Claudine said to me when I left the hospital was she shook her finger at me. <laughs> and she says, you drink water, you get some rest, you don't drink enough water, you She turned to the Clint. She says, you see that he drinks water, he go. And I'm getting balled out. And I never knew it felt so good to get balled out. <laughs> so okay, I'll, I'll drink some water. So things is, is going great. I want, if you will, to turn your Bibles to Joshua, the fifth chapter, and I'm going to read it, the uh, 12th verse. And this is about when Joshua made the sun stand still so that they could defeat the enemies. How many of you know that story? How many of you have heard of Joshua making the sun stand still? Yes. Wow, I thought there's, there's a story I've gone through, only two or three of them. Why? Uh, there's a story in the Bible where Joshua was in a battle and uh, and against the enemies of Israel and he needed more daylight and he prayed and God actually made the sun stand still. And uh, every, seems like everyone used to know about this story and, and everyone has heard this from the time that there was this kid that they said that one time in court, there was a man that had been arrested, and his name happened to be Joshua, and he came up before the judge. The judge says, what's your name? And he said, Joshua. And the judge thought he'd have a little fun, and so he says, are you the one that made the sun stand still? And he says, no, sir. He says, I'm the one that made the moon shine still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if God is good, I want to read this. And I trust that we're going to get blessed by it. Then spake Joshua to the Lord on the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said, In the sight of Israel, son, stand thy still upon Gideon and thy moon in the valley. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hastened not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it, or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voices of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him into the camp of Gilgad. But these five kings, and it was an army and, uh, that came against them, and there was five kings, they, they, they saw that, that the battle was going against them, and so they went and hid themselves in a cave at Matthew. Uh, and Joshua returned and all Israel with him unto the camp of Gilgal. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave. And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave at Makita. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave and set men by it to keep them. And stay ye not, but pursue after the enemies and smite the hindmost of them, suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God hath delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter, till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities. And all the people returned unto the camp to Joshua and Mekita in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Joshua, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me, out of the cave. And they did so and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave. And the king of Jerusalem, king of Hebron, and the king of Jeremiah, the king of Elton. And it says, And it came to and it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua 
that Joshua, listen to this, that Joshua called for all of the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war which went in with him, Come here, put your feet up on the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet up on the necks of them. And here is my text. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed, be strong, and be of good courage. Hallelujah. And that word, be of good courage, is what I want to talk about for just a little while. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your blessings that we have felt. And we're thankful that you have assured us victory. Yes. And I pray, Lamb of God, that tonight as I speak of courage, for I feel that you've laid it on my heart that people who don't understand what courage is or who lack courage in their life, that you will give them spiritual courage. And that lives will be changed and that there will be power into the lives of individuals because they understand courage. They ask for it and they need it. It's going to happen tonight, I believe, and I thank you for it. And I love you more. What, I want to ask you a question. There's, there's just us here, so we're not going to be too formal. What is courage? Somebody, tell me what courage is. Dry. Right? Someone else? It's doing something when you don't want to and you're scared to death, but you do it anyway. Often. <laughs> right. Stand against fear. You're not afraid to make mistakes. Yeah. It's just, it, it's trust. And, and, but here's the thing that I want to talk about. The Lord has laid on my heart. And, and uh, this is kind of the backbone of the church, and I, I'm kind of glad that it's this way because I might say something I should have wanted to fit in. Uh, uh, courage is, is a word and, and an element that is sometimes hard to define. The Bible talks about courage, and I have never heard anybody preach on this. I don't have any notes. I, 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 in my whole house, I don't have a book of outline sermons that somebody wrote or something. I try to get mine on my knees, but the Lord just yes. laid it on my heart. I want you to talk about courage. This is not what I was going to talk about. And so I got to studying, and I looked in the concordance to find courage, and I found courage was written in, in the Bible 20 times. That's, that's all that I could find in there. It was, it was written, the word courage is in the Bible 20 times. And of the 20 times, almost always, look, 15 times, the courage is used that talks about good courage. And the Bible emphasizes not just courage, but good courage. And I thought, well, if there's a good courage, there's got to be a bad courage or a courage that is not good. And I begin to think about courage and, and exactly what it meant. For some reason, my mind went back to the time that I was in a rodeo and people say, well, when you was evangelizing, did you rodeo? Yes, especially sometimes in the summertime when people was not wanting revivals. Uh, because people were vacationing, so I was rodeo at the same time that I was preaching. And I was in a rodeo one time, and I was sitting on a Bramer bull, and, and I was just sticking my hand in the rope uh, for them to tighten the rigging on it. When I looked over at a fellow that was in the shoot next to me, and he was waiting a little long, and I was getting a little aggravated because I was wanting to get out on the bull that I had before he got agitated. And as I looked over and as he put his hand in the bull rope and the other cowboys began to pull on the rope to tighten it down, I seen something that 
just caught my attention. For a moment, I lost concentration on my goal. His hand was, was shaking and, 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 and trembling like this. And I looked into his face, and I could see absolutely torture in his face, and I will never forget it. I sat there wondering what in the world that he was doing. Why did he put himself through that kind of torment? I'm aggravated because the, my goal is standing up square and I'm going to be able to get out on him now and I, I wanted to get out and, and this kid seems to be delaying and he's scared to death and, and I thought, he's got no business here. And finally they opened up the chute and the bull went out and two or three jumps bucked him off and the kid was hurt. And now there's another delay as they bring a stretcher to carry him out. And I thought, what exactly is that? He had courage. I had to give him that. He, got, he had no business because then I'm thinking how ridiculous and, and just how stupid that it was for him to even get on that board. And you say, well, Ray, wasn't you going to get on one? Yes, but there has to be a knowledge whenever you do that. Whenever you get on a bull, you have, you have to know your own abilities and who you are, and you also know the bull you're riding. And if you are at a different rodeo, then you ask someone, how does this bull buck? And they will say, well, he will come out and make two jumps, and, and, and he will turn into your head, and, and if he turns into your hand, it's easier to ride. And if he turns away from your hand, it's pretty tough. If he bucks out straight, uh, you're not going to make any money. He needs to circle. So you go to the, well, not a rodeo clown, but the bullfighter. And you say, hey, will you help me out? This bull, when he comes out, he bucks straight. And I need him to turn, and I need him to turn in my hand. Can you get in front of him and, and, and turn him in, into my hand? And, and then uh, you're still going to get banged up and you're going to get bruises, but there's a tremendous amount of knowledge whenever you, whenever you get involved in that. And so it is courage to get on one, but courage without knowledge is absolutely pure stupidity. Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about being courageous. When we fight the devil, and I've been in one, there has to be bravery, there has to be courage, but courage without knowledge is just going to get you in trouble. Sure. We've been talking about the devil and, and, and how he fights and who he is, and, and I see people that say, well, I'm not taking nothing off of that devil, and, and they say things mm -hmm. like they're ready to go to battle, but they are not living right. Come on now, right? They have not the knowledge of, of, of what they are capable of in Christ because I will stand here and tell you the devil is a liar, that he's a slew foot, and I have no fear of him. Amen. Not because that I think that I am greater Come on than now. him, yes. because I am not. But I have the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. And He has saved me, written my name, and the power that we have over the devil is in Christ. Yes. And we must be aware of that. In the story that I just read to you, when Joshua said, okay, we've got these kings, and they've tried to hide, and they're in a cave, and Joshua says, bring them out, and and then he told the captains, I want you to come and I want you to put your foot on their necks. Are you sure that you want me to do it? Now, that wasn't killing them this yet. They killed them later. But there was a sign. There was something. He said, I want you to know that our Lord is able to give us victory. Yes, hallelujah. And we're going to put our foot on their necks. And see, we as Christians, if we're going to have power with God, and even though we have 
been saved for a long time, but maybe we haven't matured like we ought to. We need to look in our lives and see if there is something there that has kept us from having full power with God. And if there's something in our lives that ought not be there, then we need to put our foot on its neck because sin cannot be shaped to where it becomes to be something that is not so bad that it's, that it's, that it's tolerable. And, and I see this all the time. Well, if I don't gamble this much, if I don't do this much, in fact, I was talking in the hospital with a preacher and he said that this guy and his mother, and she's old fashioned, I mean old time, like Chris talks about over here. I mean old time back right there. And, 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 uh, and she went to visit this church, Pentecostal church. And so her and her son was sitting there, and the Sunday school teacher got up and said, Well, it's okay to have a beer once in a while. Oh, Moses. And she stood up and she says, What did you? <laughs> and the kid says, Mama, sit down <laughs> with this nope. vision. What did he say? <laughs> sit down, Mama. So they sat down. And I see this a lot. Bless them, Lord. Well, it's all right if I don't pray like I, I, I still pray, but I, I, I don't get to the place to where I used to fast, I'm not that, I, I just pray a little bit, and, yeah, I watch things on TV that probably I shouldn't, I, I, I go to, a, and I know there's going to be ladies that is not dressed properly, and there's going to be words that is going to be spoken, but, but I'm going to be in church, and, and I'm seeing a carelessness. Do you remember when, uh, now this is stuff coming right now, the Holy Spirit is giving me, Bless I haven't thought nothing about, but, the, but Pharaoh is, it, it, it is uh, having plagues upon him, and Moses is, is saying, set my people free. And do you remember the time when Pharaoh said, uh, Moses says, Pharaoh, I want to take my people, we're going to go worship our God, we're going to sacrifice him. Uh -huh. And remember Pharaoh said, okay, but you're not going to go too far. Right. You know, you can go a little ways and, and you can do this, but you're not going to go too far. And I see this in not churches only, but in the lives of people when they were one time so on fire for God and they're still going a little ways and, and, and they're still sacrificing unto the God and they love God and I believe that they're saved. If the trump would sound, I believe that they would go in the rapture. Bless them, Lord. But we are looking for someone. Somewhere. Okay, we'll say, I'm putting my foot on the neck of sin. Yes. I'm getting out of my life. I'm getting neglect out of my life. I'm, I'm, I'm getting some worldly things out of my life that, that, that has crept in, and I'm going to have the courage to put my foot on the neck of sin, and I'm going to be changed. And then we'll come. All of you. Courage. I remember Brother Gress, Sister Kimsey, if you heard him preach much, you had to have heard the story. He was always telling about that dog that he had, that boy. Yeah. Yeah. And he used to use that expression so many times. I've heard him use it so many times. And he would talk about, you know, how tough that dog was. And it didn't make any difference if, if it was a, it, it, how big another dog was. He always said this. He says, it's not how big the dog is in the fight. But it's how big the fight is right. in the dog. Yes. And so if we want to have power, if we want to have courage, then I'm going to talk in just a few minutes about what we must do.
Because see, I also know of another dog story. We was up elk hunting and, and in the group of men that was there, there was a couple of them that had a Jeep and it was one of them Jeeps without a top and, and the window would lay down on it and, and it was just like an army Jeep. We all started off in different directions and these two guys that had the Jeep, they went one way and, and, and one of the guys in the camp, he was always afraid to get lost and he decided to follow a fence line up and, and just stay along that fence line so he could follow it back. Well, that fence line came to a road and he was about to cross the road and looked and he seen the Jeep cut. Now he thought that it was our friends that was in that Jeep, but it wasn't. And he said, I'm going to have some fun, I'm going to scare him. So he took and he set his rifle against the tree and he had, it was cold, he had this big coat, he pulled the hood off over his head like this and he waited until the Jeep got right there and he jumped out in front of it and went, <laughs> and that Jeep slammed on the brakes and they had a little dog with it. It was, uh, it, it was one of them carried around dogs. And, 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 it, and it was sitting there in the middle of that dog went, and it went over the top of the windshield, off the hood, and it was yapping as it went off in, in the forest. My friend went over and says, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you was one of my friends. Well, after a few choice words, the guy said, and besides that, he says, you don't have any friends. <laughs> he says, you caused me to almost have a heart attack. And I often wondered what would have happened had they had a pit bull with them, or a rock wire or something. Who would have been the one that would have been heading back to camp? Right. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about courage, good courage, that we must have whenever we need it. In order to have this kind of courage, we must know who Satan is, and that's why that we have been talking about him. I'm not giving him glory when I say that he's the ruler of the earth, or he's the prince of the air, that when he was created perfect in beauty, that music was created with him and within him, and, and uh, he was given the power of death, and he is allowed to try. And I, and I give you all the scriptures about that. I'm not giving him glory. Some people say, well, I, I, I don't like to talk about Satan being that powerful because I'm not going to acknowledge his power. How stupid is that? Amen. When enemies went to war, or when we go to war, the first thing we want to know is what kind of weapons the enemy has and how powerful is it so that we can compare what the enemy has with what we have. It's that way. And in fact, uh, there's a scripture and I thought that I could find it really, really quick but it, it tells and I think I thought of it too. I've got so many in, in my mind that I want you to write this one down. I'll find it. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and the 11th verse least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So what does the Bible tell us? The Bible says, don't be ignorant of how he works. Know how he works. How are you going to know how he works? Unless you study and are aware of it. And so we must educate ourselves to how Satan works. So when he comes in like a thief, that we can recognize him. But the thing that we need to know that encourages us and gives us this good courage, that gives us the bravery to stand against the devil. And as Tim said, when the battle seems to be yo-yo, or I believe he used the word roller coaster, up and down, and, and we don't get too high, and we don't get too discouraged. We just stand 
on his word because there are certain times that that's all we can do is just stand. Amen. And so we need to know what kind of ground that we are standing on. And to do that, we have to know who we are. Yes. The devil doesn't want you to know who you are, but we are priests. In Christ. Did you know that? Yes. I have the scriptures and I'm reluctant to take the time to read them. But see, in the beginning, when man was created, the head of the household was, was priest. Noah offered the sacrifice, and Jacob offered the sacrifice, and then the law came. And there's things about the law that was difficult, and of course, we could not keep that. But there was one thing that I did like about the law, because maybe I'll take the, take the time uh, to read that. Because the law, Exodus 19, I turned right to it, from the sixth verse. And, and God said, I'm changing this and no longer is it just a man that's the head of the household that is the priest. But now I'm going to make all of Israel priests. And in Exodus the 19th chapter, the 6th verse, and it says, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. But Israel did not keep God's commandments and they erred. And so the priesthood was taken away. And it was given to Aaron or the Levite tribe. And they were the priests and executed the religious rites that they had at that time. And it was only of that particular tribe in once a year that one was allowed to go in to the Holy of Holies. And, and you, you know the story of who it was and, and, and how you had to be pure to go in and that tie rope around the priest's leg that went in in case there was sin because he had fallen. But listen, can you imagine someone that was so right with them? And what a privilege to go into the Holy of Holies. But that was once a year and the, and the plan that God had for us to be priests, to have that kind of authority, we lost it because we did not obey God. <coughs> and then Jesus went to the cross and there he died. And during that time, we are aware that there was an earthquake. And the veil that separated the Holy of Holies was rent or torn. Mm -hmm. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 <laughs> and what that signified was that we, as believers to come to the Holy of Holies. I, Hallelujah. Hebrews, I've got to read this, and if somebody gets happy, just help yourself. <laughs> Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and the 19th verse, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ. You get an idea who you are. Are, are you, are you, somebody says, say I'm saved, say it to you, I'm saved. I'm saved. Like it, but say I'm saved. I'm redeemed. Come on everybody, I'm redeemed. I'm, redeemed. I'm blessed. Yes, I'm hallelujah. I'm free. Yes, I'm free. amen. Glory. I'm happy. Yes. I'm happy. I've got joy. Praise Jesus. Jesus. 
The devil don't like it, but I'm a priest. I'm a priest. Yes, Lord. I've got privileges. Yes, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. See, we are a people that don't have to walk been downtrodden. We're not a people that is displaced. We're not a people that is forgotten. We are not a people that is discouraged. We're not a, 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 a people that is battling for a useless cause. We're, we're, we're not a people that has no power. We're not a people that is running from the devil. We're not a people that is hiding in a cave someplace. But we are blessed. Yes, amen. We are powerful in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We are victorious in yes, the name we of are. Jesus. Hallelujah. We can overcome Satan in the name yes, of Jesus. Yes. We're redeemed because of Jesus. Yes. Let's get an idea of who we are and get some good courage so we can stand up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. I hate you. Yes. But he's defeated. <laughs> yes. I'm in a battle, but he loses. Yes, he does. Glory. Sometimes I cry, but Jesus wipes my tears and I win again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Church, we need to shout again. We need to realize who we are. There was a great price paid at Calvary when Jesus died for the system. I'm carrying his mail, so every one of you. Ever get to the place 
Bless him, Lord. We can get it in our mind who he is and then get our mind made up. Yes, made up. See, I said that Jesus. the Lord would not intrude on your will. That's right. He wants you to make up your mind. Do you want to be part of this or not? Bless him, Lord. Do you want to sell completely out or not? What's that old song that I made up my mind? Yeah. Oh, devil won't like this. That's all right. He don't want you to make your mind up that you're going through no matter what. He doesn't want you to make your mind up that you have a discouragement you're not going to quit. He don't want you to make up your mind that, 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 that on, maybe you're, it. you're not able to pay time. He don't want you to make your mind up that it might be too. He want that I'm going to tell you what. When you get your mind made up and say, I'm going to. Yes, Hallelujah. I don't care what else. Jesus. My mind is made up. I will not be moved. Amen. Amen. I will not be moved by anything that the devil throws at me. My mind is made up and yes. I'm not going to waver one little bit. My mind is made up. I'm confident that Jesus is who he said he is. Yes. I'm confident he knows my name. I'm confident he's got me by the hand. I'm confident that he cares for me. Yes, and I'm yes. going to Going to, I'm 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 going to, Yes, Lord. Your mind may not. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, God. And the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You heard the Oh. <laughs> Give me a Holy Ghost filled person that says, I want all yes. of the Holy Spirit that I can. I want God's Spirit. Yes. I don't yes, care God. whatever. Thank you. Say, I don't care what they think. That's right. I'm washed in the blood. I've been Hallelujah. Washed. I've been redeemed. Woo, My glory. mind's made up, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, a supernatural yes. power that will defeat Satan because Jesus paid it all. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Good turn. Oh, yes, God. You know what I have to just instead of going through and finding a big conclusion, you do this in sermons, well, you have an introduction and you have this. And I, I, I'll just forget about the conclusion and, and just tell you. If you'll get your mind made up. That's it. If you'll say, I'm sold out, I don't care what it is. I'm putting my neck on the besetting seat. Yes, and I want to be refilled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I'm not afraid to get on the front lines. I'm not afraid to put my foot on the neck of the devil on sin because I know that I'm more of a conqueror. Your life will be changed. Yes. Amen. And this church will be changed. Yes. If there's five of them, you can't sleep tonight, but you'll say, change me, Lord. Change me. Change me. And, and, and my mind's made up. I'm a different person. I've sat in church for 40 years, but this night, I'm giving the devil a black eye. I'm going to get my mind made up like yes, never God. before. Things is going to change. And oh glory, I'm going to walk in victory. <laughs> I promise you, your life will change. Amen. You'll have more power than you yes. ever. Mind that courage is made up of mind, 
spirit and the temperament or the mixture. It's like that bull rider. He kind of brave. He didn't have the mixture. Wasn't too smart about what he. The children of Israel leave Egypt. We see the Red Sea open up. First thing they do is come to some bitter waters. Do you remember that? <laughs> they just left at a trial. Boy, the devil was a liar when he tells you that the trials is because God has forgotten you, though. Trials is so that God can show you his strength. That's right. In our weakness, he's able he's to show us. Yes, hallelujah. The trial that I'm having right now isn't that God has forsaken me. I feel so close to him yes. that, I, that I just think about him and I start crying right. and bawling. He hasn't uh -huh. forgotten me. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. And showed me his strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise and the Lord. Remember, Moses, they, they tossed the tree into the water, and now the water spit the drink. The tree held it. But they get on to the promised land. Jim, can you imagine if, if you was one of them slaves and and, and we're just about to get to the farm. I mean, it's not that far. It, 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 it's not very long. And a promised land is there. And you can't even imagine how great it is. And, and we see the Red Sea open. And we've seen the bitter walk. Now we get right there. And, and uh, Moses says, okay, now go in and spy the land. Now we, we've got to be aware of, of the enemy. And they lost their courage. Yes, they the Bible did. says because of unbelief. No, not really. They, they looked and seen the size of that army and they lost their courage. Right. The first thing was they lost their courage. Oh, Jesus. And see, we sing camping in Canaan's land and uh, something, what is that song? I've left the land and whatever. And, 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 and so we hit, we think, no, it was just, no, 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 I'll tell you what happened. Because they lost courage. Every one of the el age of eligibility died out in the wilderness. That's right. That's right. Those people had the promise right there. Yes. Right there. And they left there eagerly looking yes. for the book. Never seen it. They'll give up. Oh, Jesus. Only Joshua, Caleb, and some of those that wasn't of the age of accountability made it to the promise. That's right. Think just before we close with me. How, how does somebody see the Red Sea open and the enemy defeated and they see the bitter water and all the merit is a cloud, uh, water a pillar, the uh, man, clothes not wearing it. How do they see? Yes. And then lose their courage. Just. Come on. Just. Oh, just before. They get to the promise. Oh, Jesus. Church. I, I read, I'm, I'm glad this is my home church because, but I, I don't have the ability to explain something I feel in my heart. I'm supposed to say, how do you believe people? You that has been here, you've been building this ministry, you've been working, and I see some of you doing things you haven't done in a long time or, or haven't done in your life. And I, 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 I've been in this long time, and I know, I promise, I would say this if God wasn't in something big is about oh, Yes, amen. 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 Don't let us get right on the verge. Oh, God. Don't let us get right at the edge. We're right there. We've been praying for it. We've hungered for it. We need it. Don't let us do right there. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Oh, and those are courage. Yes, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Our Heavenly Father. Oh, God. Oh, I thank you oh, for your word. 
Almost every time in your word that you talk about courage, you says, be a good courage. Be a good courage. And Master, we have been reminded tonight that if we make our minds up, if we're washed, if we're filled with your spirit, we can put our foot on the enemy's neck. Glory! Oh Lord, we ought to be shouting because victory is ours. We're saved, we're redeemed, blood blood, we're set free, we're happy, we have joy, we have peace. We ought to be shouting. Jesus. Oh, yeah, the book I'll ask this in Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Sister Jensen. Yes, God. I'm going through. Yes, God. Jesus, I'm going through. Yes, I'll pay the price. Whatever others do. I'll take the one with the Lord's anointed few. I'm Going through Jesus, I'm going through. Sister Sellers, would you come to the piano, please? Can somebody push me? Can the team push me up front? We're going to sing that again. Everybody stand up. You know, it is time to make up our minds. Hallelujah. I trust that people have made the commitment this week that they said they would do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many plan to go through? How many are going to believe God to do the miraculous? Hallelujah. It takes a faith and, as he said, courage to press on. Hallelujah. I'm going through, Jesus. I'm going through. I'm going to pay the good. Listen, there's a price to pay. Yes, it's free. Our salvation is free. But if we want to see the works of God, he preached just Sunday night the works that we need to do. James said, if I have faith without works, it's nothing. But he said, I'll show you my faith by my works. Hallelujah. And he took an example of Abraham when he took Isaac up on that mountain. That's the works he's talking about. The works of faith. When God says do this, we do it and we don't ask questions. That's right. Amen. That's how our faith works. So we've got to have we must have a made up, made up mind. We've been sitting here now. We're going into our third year that we've been in this place. This place right here. And we need to see the manifestations of God. But we've got to make up our minds. I want to be a part of that. Do you want to be a part of that church? How many want to be a part of that? To see the miraculous once again. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. Lord, I've experienced it. I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make up your mind, you sing this with me. I'm going through. Is that in a low enough key for me to lay? Do you think? I'm going through. Jesus. Sing it. Sing with conviction.
said, oh God, revive us in the midst of the years. The danger time is this year, these people that we're living right now. And David, the army was going out to fight. And Joab said to David, David, if you don't go with us, I'm going to take the glory for this battle and this victory. And David decided to stay home. And it was during that time, I believe, I may be wrong, it may be a different time, but it was when he was laid back. He was the king. He had accomplished everything he wanted to accomplish, no doubt. And he looked out the window and he saw Bathsheba. Because he was idle. He was taking a rest. He thought, I don't need to fight anymore. Let me tell you, saints, I don't care how old any of us are. We cannot give up the battle. We cannot give up the fight. Hallelujah. The battle is not to the weak. The battle is to the strong. That says, I'm going to, listen, it's not natural strength. It's not what strength we have in our natural bodies. But it's the strength of the power of God that we allow to move in us and through us. And say, devil, I've just yeah. begun to fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, all of a sudden. Yeah, all of a sudden. Oh, my God. You know what, Brother Ray? The siblings of God, the district doesn't think anything's going to come of this. They've given us their approval, you know. Just do your little thing, you think. God is bigger. He's bigger. Yes. He's bigger. Yes. He's bigger than what we've seen so far. Yes. Yes. Come on, don't get happy with our little group sitting here and singing our songs that we like and, and feeling the little spirit of God. Get your boxing gloves on. Yes. 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 The works of faith. We're going to start Lighthouse. I had a young lady that was house sitting for us because our home had been broken into while we were traveling in Elmer Lodge. We lived in Elmer Lodge. She was absolutely shocked that I was going to start a church with nothing. <laughs> when we got God, we got everything. No. And I kept telling her, well, yeah. But God, God said do it. I had all kinds of battles. The district didn't want it. Other neighboring preachers didn't want it. But I knew what I knew. Brother Perry, I knew what I knew. And I know what I know about this place. It's because God put this together. Yes, he did. Some of you may not know, but when I saw this building, I said, that's our building. When it came up for rent, they kept telling me that the people that were moving us and all of that, and my real estate man, well, you've got to have a backup plan. <laughs> I said, well, we're doing what we can, but that's our building. Y'all remember that? Dick, you remember me saying that? That's our building. I don't know where he's taking us from here. I don't know. See, I don't care if we have a huge building to hold thousands of people. If we just have people come through here and they get on fire for God and they'll go back to their churches and say, you know, we need to do this. We need the fire of God. We need the power of God. We need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Oh. 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 You have to understand, it's been a while since I preached. You understand that. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <sighs> Nothing's too big for my God. No, 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 no. Nothing's too big for my God. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to be dismayed. Nothing's too big for God and I'm in His rest. 
Can you get that key? Well, no. No, no, nothing. No, don't get it too high for me now. Nothing's too big for my God. No, 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 no. Nothing's too big for my God. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to be dismayed. Nothing's too big for God and I'm in His grace. We find that rest in God. And this rest is not, oh, I'm going to kick back now. I'm going to take off. You know, people think, Johnny's 87, I'm 80. What in the world are we doing this for? You know what's wrong with people today? They don't have any kingdom vision. They're just living their lives. But didn't you read it? We're a kingdom of priests. Come here, lady. I love you. Did you know that? I'm so glad that God gave us an Yes. Oh, hallelujah. She's worked for God all her life. Still doing it. Now she quit getting paid and she's volunteering. We do this, maybe. Huh? Yes. So we can do this. Well, how are we going to do it? Yes. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I forgot what. What am I to That's the first thing. What am I to dread? What am I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms, sing it, church. Leaning, leaning, and secure. But anyway, let's let's press on, church. Let's pray. brother. It's so good to see you, brother Art. And I know Sister Linda's up in New Mexico. She's supposed to be back on the weekend, right? Tomorrow. That's good. I'm glad you're here. Mary June. Did she already leave? Uh, you came by yourself. 
I, I applaud you. Because I, I didn't expect that. <laughs> There's something going on in Brother Lee, but let, let's agree together again. We prayed yes. for him, uh, I guess it was Sunday night, but he's having a lot of stomach problems and they really don't know, but he's not even being able to sleep. I've been there, done that, I know what, and Brother Ray, come here Brother Ray. You got anything left in you? Can you pray for Brother Lee? That God will heal his stomach. Our Heavenly Father, <laughs> when we come to you, we come with good courage. Yes. We come with good courage because yeah. it was you who invited us to come boldly to yeah. the throne. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. enter the very presence of God. Yeah. And there on the throne sits one who has the answer, who knows no defeat, who there is nothing impossible with. And so we come like you've asked us to do. And I pray, Master, right now that you will reach down to Brother Lee yes. and that you will touch him. Oh, yes. That you will touch him and take care of this problem and may it go away and give him the testimony that yes, Christ oh, yes. cares, Christ lives, Christ is mighty and there's victory in the name of Jesus. He's a servant of yours, O Lamb of God. Oh, Master, do it now. Master Matt. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. And we believe you in the you said. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give praise and thanks to you, Lord. For victory is ours in the love of you. Know what?